Hello, friends. This is Broken, playing everything on Glass Masquerade Origins. In the past, a few times, I've made a bit of, like, I guess you'd call it a vlog video. It still had gameplay. I've done this a few times. Where I was playing uh, golf with your friends and rolling through the courses solo. The gameplay was meant to be more of a backdrop just because I felt like talking about something. I wanted some background noise. Glass, Mer Glass Masquerade, excuse me, is going to provide just that. This is an awesome game. About visiting a total of, I think, 26, 16, 25, with the DLC is 26 different countries via a clock exhibit. There are, these are all stained glass puzzles representing the country they reside within. And the stained glass puzzle is a clock. Um, I've beaten it, so again, it's just going to be chill, background noise, happiness, while I, yeah, I guess, rant about something. All right, I'll kick off a puzzle, and then I'll talk to you. Welcome to the International Times Expe Expe Exhibition, dedicated to decorative stained glass artisans of the 20th century. This is whole, the whole game. We recommend inspecting the exhibition starting France, leaving further route planning to you. See this? It's simple. Just go puzzle to puzzle. That's the DLC one. No big fuss. Some of them are different shapes. The DLC is a circle. Oh, I can't light up a lot of them. Oh, you can start with the DLC. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, you can see this one's an octagon. This is friend. This is the whole game. You just you hit play, you go in, you do a puzzle. That's it. It's very fun. Very awesome game, by the way. Uh, it shows you a couple edge pieces, and the rest it just sort of gives you the freedom to do what you want to do. I'd say these are rings, and I can move them around. A very appealing interface. See? Uh, they auto-rotate. You never have to. They go to their correct orientation when they're over the puzzle. It can be a little hard to get used to. Because when you put them back, look. Whoop, whoop, whoop. They'll, they'll spin back to however they were. Which isn't necessarily perfect. See that one? Different. Different. Gosh. So what to talk about. Um, I was working on recording something. Uh, and of course, no surprise, I'll, I'll do a few episodes of something at a time when I'm sitting down to go on through it. I had a bit of a revelation over the kind of content that I want to put out. And, you know, sorry if you're already rolling your, eye and stuff, your eyes and stuff. I know I'm not a big powerhouse. I just have a few niche people that are really supportive and awesome and seem to like what I'm all about. But they deserve a positive experience with some interaction like this just like you know millions of fans for a bigger channel do so whatever i'm just going to talk about what i feel why isn't that moving the other ring that is weird usually it's one big ring huh i was recording a game that i received as a gift from someone called wizard of legend that's it it's a roguelike and it's awesome all these cool unlockable items and i hit sort of a mental impasse with it I guess sort of a breaking point and I had to stop and I, I actually deleted all my footage everything I had and I just threw it away on purpose I've realized and this doesn't have to be perpetual but for now I just I don't want to that was an accident <laughs> whoops um, I don't want to record roguelike so much and that's part of the reason that when I drop the Binding of Isaac, a long time ago. I didn't go back. There's too much... I joke in videos here and there about being OCD. I don't mean it like that, and I, I shouldn't even joke about it. I, I don't... Whenever I've said that before, as I've said, you know, I like to 100% games and do everything about them, I just feel strongly compelled with certain games to do everything there is to do on them. And it it becomes counterintuitive when I try to play a game like The Binding of Isaac or Wizard of Legend or Ziggurat's another game I have that I won't record or God, there are tons of roguelikes. Um, Rogue Legacy. If I looked at my um, fat stuffed Steam library, I'm sure I'd easily find a dozen more. But uh, my, my mentality doesn't work well with them when it comes to recording and then I want to do everything and show everything, but it it doesn't create as good of an experience for you, and not even for me. I end up leashed on the content that I can experience because, like, every several minutes or whatever, you know, do I want to do ten minutes of raw gameplay and then stop the video and do another intro and do another one? Or do I want to record for an hour and, you know, chop that down to the ten minutes of that hour? 
but it's a roguelite, so it's so tricky. And The Binding of Isaac is a wonderful example of this. I say it's tricky because it's, with The Binding of Isaac, let's say, if you've, I'm sure plenty of people have seen it, it's incredibly popular. You know, when do you show off and when do you not? You're going to have to kill, to 100% a game like that, which I'd love to do. Uh, my my hang-ups over, oh, look at this, hold on a sec. Jeez, thought that would take me longer. There you go, and that's France. Art Deco, there's my time. Cool, let's kick on another clock. Britain's a little dead end. Do Britain next. Most of them are three to five difficulty, I believe. So, I, it just, it feels like working against the waves, you know. It feels very counterintuitive trying to record content like that. Because The Binding of Isaac, for example, has Mom as a boss that, if you're trying to 100% the game, I think it's called, uh, because there have been so many renditions of that I've forgotten. I think at this point it's called Platinum God 100% or True Platinum God. I've forgotten. If you want to go for that, Mom is going to die. God, at least a dozen times to every character. When do you show that and when do you not? It might sound obvious, like, well, when it's, you know, the first couple of times, just, just show that and upload it. And it's awesome. It's fresh and new. And yeah, but with games like Binding of Isaac or really any roguelike, you're always getting all sorts of different weapons. So you end up going through the same bosses like Mom and the same creatures and the same content repeatedly with just different rolls of the dice and the items that you get. And sometimes the best runs don't work. Sometimes the goofiest runs do work. There's so much almost scatterbrain probability to how I do in that experience. And because this isn't true for all of them, but The Binding of Isaac in particular, there's so much to the meta of it if you want to knock out the high-end content that you have to do a lot of reading. On the side, you just have to stop what you're doing and look up on... Uh, there's a Platinum God website. I forgot the exact name. It has all the items. It's an interactive tool. You don't want to spoil everything in the world, but... You know, after you've seen like 200 items in the game and you start seeing items over again, like you don't feel bad about looking it up. Like, oh, geez, was this good or bad? I can't remember. It's one of the 600 vocab words I learned playing through this game. I don't know. Do I need this? Does it fit with this? Does it mesh with this? And there's so much breaking this, like... There's so much breaking my... I guess my spree. Like, your rhythm. You know, I get going, and it's recording is awesome, and it's very therapeutic for me. That's a big part of the reason I do it. I do that for that reason, and for, as you know, the one view I might get. That's all it takes for me to keep going. Someone's listening. It matters to someone. I'm not forcing anyone. They're choosing to take the time. I do it for them, and I do it for me because it makes me happy. It de-stresses me and stuff. And that doesn't mean that I'll be perpetually averse to challenges or difficult games. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter, I put a ridiculous amount of time into because a lot of that were these weird little niche different things that you have to do to unlock stuff a lot of it felt fresh and new and like a one-time thing for the binding of isaac i don't want to show mom being killed 50 different times while recording it and the recording stretches over the course of months and like i can't even remember you know in the past if i had a run just like this am i regurgitating content i'm just saying slightly different things and it's not intentional. I, I really just kind of <laughs> let my personality flop around helplessly on the ground, and sometimes you'll laugh at it and sometimes you won't. It's so much harder to get into that and to have fun commentating on what I'm doing and going through if, for example, you're doing something like Killing Mom for the 50th time. Um, I love that game throughout all of its... I've played since, I guess you'd call it Vanilla Isaac. It was just called The Binding of Isaac. Before Afterbirth, before Rebirth, before Afterbirth Plus, before <laughs> Wrath of the Lamb. I played when it was just a regular game made in Flash, and I loved it. I still love it, but I'm tired of installing that game, putting it up on Steam, whatever, and not jumping on it, not playing it, not doing what I enjoy because of the way I want to present content on YouTube because I was recording it before. And so, it's okay, it's not a big deal. No one's no one's yelling at me like... Well, like, one person's yelling at me about Isaac. <laughs> Mostly. No one's really yelling at me about, where are your Isaac videos? Why aren't you doing more Isaac? Why don't you do this? What's wrong with your content? Uh, no, it's... 
again, there's just a niche following of a few people, but I feel like it's important to tell you what I'm deciding to do and why. And so things like the Wizard of Legend, the Binding of Isaac, I'm going to start playing those more for me, probably off camera, just because I need games that I can dive into and mindlessly play for hours on end without having to even think about talking. Some days I need that. I have to consciously set aside games. Boop! Awesome! Let's see if there's an easy one. Maybe we can do one more. Oh, we'll do Italy. Italy's cool. I have to make a conscious effort to pick out games that aren't going to go on YouTube because it can put me into a different headspace when I'm going to record something, when I know I'm going through that experience. And sometimes it can hurt my perception of the game I'm wanting to go through. Like, I'm still trying to find time to go through a hat in time, but I haven't been in the right, I guess, headspace to knock that out just yet. And that's that's a little frustrating, you know? I, I just wonder to myself, how many awesome games like this that I have? Because I do have too many. Just <laughs> Humble Bundles and Steam Sales over the years, I've accidentally... Well, accidentally, that's... <laughs> what a defensive word. <laughs> I've intentionally, over time, accrued way too many games. And, um... It's a little stressful, and I wonder, you know, would I have beaten and 100%ed it and loved to death a hat in time by now? If I wasn't concerned with, oh, I should record it and make sure I get A, B, and C right, because that's how I want to upload stuff. I'm not jotting down jokes. I'm, I'm not phoning it in or anything like that. It's it's all genuine. But that's the, that's the tough part about it. I look at something like that, and I think, um, do I have this in me today? <laughs> Can I just... Not put on a show, not put on something false, but just explode, expose my personality to the world and it just be goofy and ridiculous and say whatever comes to mind and not care. Can I do that on something like I had in time today? And sometimes I don't know the answer or I'll end up recording a couple videos and then I blink and it's been three months. I didn't record it more. Like, oh, geez. Have, I just wonder, like, have, have I burned out this game for myself? Would I have already beaten it and loved it to death? Would it be my favorite game of all time if I wasn't concerning myself so much with recording it and when to record it and how to record it, how I'm going to chop it up, A, B, C, D, E. So, in order to develop a healthier relationship with the content that I want to go through, I'm just letting you know that, at least for now, I'm going to avoid putting roguelikes up. I'm going to save them for me because roguelikes are very good for just playing over and over and over again, meaning like the second you end a run, you want to kick off another run. And with Wizard of Legend in particular, even the Binding of Isaac, that's another frustration. Sometimes you want to stop mid-run, but it's harder to like let it go if you're trying to record a run in pieces. You stop a video, you're halfway through the run, but you know, you just want to shake away. You want to go do something else. And you feel guilty. You know, I don't want to like, oh, I'll wait and record more later. And you know, maybe I'll lose I'll forget what I was doing before and my, my commentary will contradict itself over something because I've it slipped my mind what boss I've already killed in a run or what I've already done in a run. Uh, I forgot I crush it in Italy. <laughs> I practiced this one for fun a couple times before I um, erase my game. I erase my game because it shows all the clocks at the bottom here. I didn't want you to just see them all <laughs> right out the gate. Like, it's no fun. I wanted you to have something to look at if you're wanting to look. But uh, it's really just my version of a vlog. Um, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm trying to scope out and define what I enjoy sharing and, you know, what is better left held to my own. You know, better left just played for my own sanity's sake without talking or, or thinking. <laughs> without thinking, yeah. Being mindless. So, yeah, that's that's all I got. It's It's nice to just... Open the floodgates and spell out some thoughts to your peers sometimes. And good, bad, ugly, whatever. If you have counterpoints on this, I'd, I'd love to hear them. I know there are wonderful, ex successful channels that will even go exclusive on games like The Binding of Isaac. There's one with, I don't know, four or five hundred videos at least. I think it's Northern Lion, if I recall right. And he does just fine, of course. That's fine. But that's what he's all about. That's not what I'm all about. My channel's broken, plays everything. I don't know that I'm ever going to want to have 200 parts for one game. If I want diversity just for the sake of diversity, I just want to play more different things and do more different things. 
and that goes at a slower pace on camera. So I don't know that I want to... Well, camera, you know, recording software. I don't know that I want that slow pace to stick me on something like The Binding of Isaac, so it feels like I only play it for 10 hours, but that 10 hours of gameplay takes me six months or something. It's just whatever math. You know what I'm saying. You want to feel like, oh, cool. At this rate, at the end of five years, I'll... I'll 100% Binding of Isaac. <laughs> I don't want 100% it now, because I don't want to record 20 videos at once. Someone will comment on the first video, hey, idiot, you didn't do this, this, and that right. And it's like, oh, well... How do I tell you that I can't apply that logic? I've recorded another four hours of this game. That's awkward, right? I want to keep a better consistency and pace with what the viewers are seeing compared to what I'm recording. And you can't do that when you're trying to crack out six, eight hours at a time because you love a roguelike to death. So that's where I'm at. Um, as always, you know, you can offer whatever insight you'd like in the comments section on games you think would be cool for me to play. I have tons of stuff. And I've even had some really wonderful people that have gifted me some stuff. And there's also stuff like Glass Masquerade. This is awesome, too. I think in the future I might uh, vlog more over this game because it's just very it's very peaceful, very relaxing. I've done all the puzzles in the past. It makes me really happy. Here's what the screen looks like. See that? And the icons are what the art sort of looks like. It's a little goofy that the left corresponds to the right so much. It's a little wonky. Because it's not like you can click on these and see the picture of it or anything. None of these are interactable, but whatever. Anywho, thank you so much for, um, if you've gone this long, thank you so much for giving me a chance and for listening. It's, it's good to clear my head on stuff like this so I can go more mindlessly into awesome games that I love when I am recording for you without stressing over weird, I don't know, control freak details like that. Uh, as always, I appreciate all of your beautiful faces. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, especially comment if you've got something to say about all this. And I will try my best to read it. Who am I kidding? I get like three comments a video. I'll, I'll probably read it. <laughs> Thanks again. I appreciate it. And I hope you have a good one. Take care. Bye!